Sylvia, speak to senior execs at SD Lauder, sell my business, do some deals, make some money. And then he was like, no, you're going to speak to millennials about being entrepreneurs. <laughs> and I was like, interesting. So I'm going to encourage you guys to leave your jobs tomorrow, <laughs> start a business, and then the company will hate me. Um, and then we spoke to Kira, and she explained what you guys were about. And um, honestly, you're probably my perfect audience, because when I speak to millennials, I get asked quite a lot. Um, the two pieces of advice I give. One, work for a corporate company first. Um, get the brand name, get the validation, get the experience, and I'll kind of touch upon that later. The second is, if you have a great idea, if it's already being done, or someone else is willing to support it, join them, right? Um, you might lose out on a bit of the fame and a bit of the money, but 80% of success is so much better than 100% of failure. <laughs> and that odds are massively stacked against you going alone. So if these guys are encouraging you to be entrepreneurs, go for it, right? Um, so a little bit about me. I was born in Manchester, England. Um, I grew up a bookworm and a sports kind of fiend. Um, I was, uh, had two doctors as parents, very conservative Indians, so I, um, I was educated to kind of keep them happy and then I played sports to keep me happy. Um, continued, I got into Oxford, um, obviously education is huge there, but they encourage everything else, right? Um, like most universities, do drama, do sports, do politics, do debating. Um, so that was great. And then suddenly you get asked, all right, what do you want to do now? What career? And you pigeonhole yourself, right? You can't have a career and do drama and do arts and you know everything else seriously. So I became a management consultant. You know, I got to wear a nice suit, I lived in London, made some money, it was awesome. But there was a big gap in my life. What sports used to be for me, it no longer was, right? It was no longer a massive part of me. Um, so I switched and I became Jerry Maguire in India, essentially. So I became a sports agent. Um, and it was fascinating. I absolutely loved it and it was huge. At 24, I left my life and everything else in, India, uh, in London to become a sports agent in India. So pause there on the lesson. So now when I look back and I look at where my friends were at that time and where I was, there are three things that I realized about myself and that you should all ask you. What motivates you? Is it money? Is it a business card? Is it the holidays that you can afford? Is it going to nice places? Really, what motivates you? Second, what do you want to define you? Is it your career? Or do you want to be defined by the fact that you know all the wines in, um, Napa Valley, or that you do drama at the weekends. What is it that you want to define yourself? And then third thing, what are you ready to give up? Because you can't do everything, right? So are you ready to give up everything, like your nice job to do this? Or are you ready to give up your weekends to do a side project at SD Lauder? What are you ready to give up? And so what I realized versus some of my friends who are doing awesome at JP Morgan, and you know, is that I wasn't motivated by money. I was massively passionate about sports as an industry, and I was basically ready to give up everything to achieve those things. And I wanted to be defined by my career. So a lot of people ask me, okay, what made you successful? You did consulting and then you became a sports agent, what made you successful? Two things, there's IQ and there's EQ, okay? IQ in the adult world is not 25 times 31. It's skills, hard skills, that only your first corporate job can really teach you which thankfully you guys probably will have. Excel, how to write a good email, how to put a PowerPoint together, ignore this one, it was done in a rush. Um, <laughs> but things that like you don't, you probably take for granted that you're learning, but if you speak to someone who's 18 and started a VC business, even if they raised 10 million, they probably don't know how to address a senior person in a, in a team. So really valuable IQ skill. Then there's EQ, a little bit different. But what that gives you is, if there are any of you that's thinking, how do I approach that senior VP to pitch my idea? You need EQ. You need to understand what's the right time of day. What mood should he be in when I go and speak to him? Maybe what should I put into my email that will get it to stand out? This is all EQ, and there's so many articles about it, but I encourage you all to read about IQ and EQ. Now that equals success, static success. Then there's learning and growth, which this equation misses. And that's probably why you're all here today where you're like, great, I love SD Lauder, I wanna stay here, but I want something more. There's a little bit more that I want. And maybe you're like, 
bored on a Monday, or you're looking at someone else's job and you're thinking, ah, oh, I wish I could do that, or you're just a bit curious. And that's learning and growth. And that's a good job, like an SD law that can provide that through this setting, but it's also within you to go out and seek that out. And so for me, that was a big part of what I'm doing today, where I was a sports agent, and it was fabulous. I met athletes, I was traveling, it was, it was fun. But I was like, what, what's more? What more can I be doing? And so today, I wanted to be, have a network across the world for sports. I realized that if you are watching La Liga in New York, why are you not drinking a Spanish beer, you know? Um, why is La Mer, any of you guys from La Mer, why is La Mer not using surfers in its adverts, right? Or why is Clinique Sun Cream not using a tennis star who spends all her time outside training? Why are you using a model? And I realized the problem with sports is it's really insular. Either you know a sports agent and you do it, or you don't. And so what we created was open sponsorship, a global marketplace for sports sponsorship, connecting brands to athletes, teams, and events. And it's really fun, but I'm also a tech entrepreneur. So second pivot, I mean, we, you know, we've heard about the trials and tribulations of a tech entrepreneur versus everything else. And I've already touched on that, so I'm gonna skip over it. And it's fun, there's loads of accolades. Right? We already talked about the benefits of doing stuff. So you, you raise money, you, I got into an accelerator, we have a great team, we won awards. But if you ask me today, could I have done the same thing as part of IMG or CAA or any of these big agencies and they appoint me as their head? I would say absolutely. When I wanted to do this, no one else was thinking about this and I spoke to people. So what I would encourage you is, sometimes it's very sexy to hear stories like mine and think, yeah, going to do it. But if you have a platform already to go out and achieve your dreams, do it with SD Lauder. They'll give you the platform to achieve so much more. So when I say look at this, I'm going to come back to the lesson. Because I believe today that you don't need to give up as much as entrepreneurs like five years ago had to give up to achieve their dreams. Because Google, Facebook, SD Lauder, they're allowing you to go out and like make something more of your career. So I think that the biggest thing is what I would say is figure out what motivates you, understand what you want to be defined by, and what you're ready to give up. And don't make a switch until you're sure that all three of them can't be achieved where you are. Um, so are we, are we good? So we have a couple of minutes for Q&A, um, but I would rather do a Q&A on myself. Um, <laughs> a lot of people say, um, you know, they'll be like, do you have any questions, Ishveen? And I'll say, what? Um, yeah, but like, can't you tell me what questions I should be asking of you? Because to be honest, like, how do you know the right questions, right? Like, you don't go into a kitchen and say, hey, how do I whisk this? You go in and you learn everything and they tell you what to do. Um, so the questions that you should be thinking about, um, I've got like two or three. Um, how do you know it's the right time to do something, to move on, or to pitch your idea? Um, and I suppose my husband will testify to this, that when you wake up every morning, worried that someone's doing what you thought you were going to do, you should probably like make that switch or you should really act on it. If you wake up in the morning and you're like, I want to talk about this idea more with friends, don't make the switch, right? Like you should fear that your business is going to be taken over by someone else, one. Second is, it's really, really hard to be an entrepreneur outside or inside, right? Like if you guys, want to do something inside in SD Lauder and use it as a platform to go bigger, you're going to have to give up your weekends. You're going to have to give your weekend, you know, um, your evenings. It's going to be really hard work. People tell you that your idea sucks. And so if it's just something that you enjoy doing, a hobby, let it be a hobby. You'll enjoy it. Like a lot of people come and work with us in sports and after a few months they're like, uh, or interns, they'll be like, I didn't really enjoy working in sports. I like sports, but do I really want to work in it? And there's a huge difference between a hobby and a career path. So make sure that what your hobby is actually your career path and, and it's not just like you're mixing the two up. Um, and then the third question is, I mean, female oriented. I mean, I know you guys are in beauty, but a lot of people are female oriented. And I'd say, honestly, it, it is harder for females. Um, your timeline, right? Like our clock, guys' clock finishes at 60. We have to do something really good by 34 because then we have to have kids, right, biologically. So I would say if you're female, then either get on it early or do this part of your life and then get back on it afterwards. So it, it is harder, but there you are. Um, 
I think any other questions would be.